Hello everyone and welcome to the D-Hard House Sock Knit Along for 2019. So this is the second video for the Knit Along. The first video was an announcement video and now this one is where we actually cast on and start the sock project. So before I get into all of that, let me remind you of how to participate in the Knit Along and go through the materials that you'll need. So first, to participate in the Knit Along, you need to watch the videos here on YouTube. So good job, you're here. Step one. <laughs> uh, step two, I want you to take progress pictures and post them either on Instagram using the hashtag DHSockCal2019 or post them in the appropriate thread in the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry or do both of those things. <laughs> so the thread on Ravelry is not a finished objects thread only. However, when you finish your socks, please post a finished picture there. Uh, but it is a chatter progress picture finished object thread all in one. So as you're knitting along, that is where I want you to post questions and pictures and to encourage others and chatter about the knit along. Uh, and then to also do that on Instagram and make sure you use the hashtag on all of your posts. If you don't use the hashtag, I can't find your picture to include it in the prize drawing. Okay, so speaking of the prize drawing, everyone who participates and posts pictures, what I will do is randomly draw winners from Ravelry and from Instagram uh, to win sock pattern prizes. And there are sock patterns that I have designed and will include my newest design, which shall be released soon. Okay, now to talk about the materials that you'll need to knit along with me. <laughs> so first, let me show you uh, the inspiration picture for our knit along. This is a pair of socks that I knit earlier this year as a gift for my mother-in-law, and I really had a lot of fun knitting up these socks. So I wanted to knit another pair, and I thought, why not make a knit along out of it? So along the way, we're going to have videos on YouTube where I take you through how to cast on, how to knit the heel, how to knit the toe, um, how to stripe the yarn, and all of that good stuff. So if you're a beginner sock knitter, this is totally the knit along for you. Okay, so the materials that you need are going to be two colors of sock weight yarn. Any sock yarn will do that you feel comfortable knitting with. Um, fingering weight yarn for your socks. I am using a gray marl and a black. Last time I used a speckled yarn and solid black. You could use any yarn combination that you wanted to. And this is where I'm really excited to see what people decide to use. Um, I like to use a fingering weight yarn that has nylon in it because I find that they last longer. Uh, my husband and I are kind of rough on our socks as we like to wear them hiking and when we're being active. So I am using two types of sock yarn that are a uh, wool nylon blend. So uh, I'm using Patton's Croy sock yarn, which is one of my absolute favorites. And this colorway is Gray Marl. This is a commercial yarn that I did pick up at a big box craft store. And just because it comes from a big box craft store doesn't mean that it's bad yarn. This is awesome. The other color that I'm using is a solid black, and this is Premier Yarns Serenity Sock Weight, and the colorway is black. It's just a solid black yarn. Another yarn from a big box craft store. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> so how much yarn will you need? It does depend on how large of socks you're knitting. So I am knitting these socks for a man and he wears a U.S. size 10, 10 and a half shoe. So um, usually for his socks, I need a total of 60 to 80 grams of yarn 
depending on how long I knit the leg. <laughs> so if you're knitting a shorter sock without a really long leg, then you don't need as much yarn. If you like your socks to have a long leg, then you'll need more yarn. So, um, and you'll need more yarn of your main color than of your contrasting color. But since we're combining the two, you know, it works out. So, um, I, the last pair of socks that I knit using this pattern, let me pull up my Ravelry page. Okay, so I just pulled up my Ravelry page on my laptop. <laughs> so I can't see myself anymore. It's going to get really awkward. So um, if you want to follow me on Ravelry, my username is Knits 2 And I have notes in the project page um, right there of how we're going to be knitting this sock. Uh, so for those of you who are wanting to look at my pictures and look at my notes, feel free to add me as a friend or just check out my projects. Anyway, <laughs> I'm looking at the yardage and in the main color, I used about 192 yards, which was 39 grams of fingering weight yarn. And then the contrasting color, I used about 92 yards, which was about 20 grams. So with your contrasting color, you could maybe squeak by <laughs> maybe with uh, with a 20 gram mini skein, which is which is pretty neat. So I have two 50 gram balls of yarn that I'm going to use, which according to those numbers should be enough to knit an entire pair of socks out of. Okay. Other than the yarn, what you're going to need are knitting needles. And I'm going to be using USI one knitting needles which are my favorite, and I'm going to be doing two 16 inch circular needles. So it's a magic loop style of knitting. Uh, so feel free to knit along using magic loop or DPNs or two circulars, doesn't matter. And if you have some other method that I don't know about, I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> um, I'm using you a size ones just because that's a size that I'm comfortable with, but choose the size needle that's comfortable for you. Um, if you're a brand new knitter, I mean, you a size ones, which is a 2.25 millimeter, is the size that I started out with. Um, these are needles from knitters. Nope. These are needles from Knitpicks, knitpicks.com. And I love them. So, yarn and needles. You'll also need scissors to cut the yarn, okay? They do not have to be formidable, but just some kind of scissors. And then you will need a yarn needle to weave in the ends later. So just, if I can get it to focus, you just need a needle with an eye that's um, big enough for your fingering weight yarn to go through. So the tip on your needle doesn't, oh my gosh. <laughs> The tip on your needle doesn't have to be very sharp. In fact, I prefer yarn needles that have a dull tip to them. Uh, but you just need some kind of yarn needle to weave in the ends at, when we're finished with the socks. And that's it. Maybe a piece of paper and a pencil to take notes along the way. But other than that, yarn, needles, scissors, and a yarn needle. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of the materials and how to participate in the knit along, let me get more comfortable and get my camera set up so that I can show you how to cast on your pair of socks. Okay, so I have my yarn, I have my needles, I have my camera turned around, so um, the camera is facing the same way that I'm looking, so it's facing away from me. So you have the same viewpoint here that you will have when you are knitting. So it's going to be awkward for me, but it's going to be way better as a tutorial for you. So the first thing you need to do before we cast on is decide 
which of your two colors is going to be your main color and which one is your contrasting color. So your main color will be the most used color in this pattern. So your main color will be used on the leg of the sock and the foot of the sock. And the contrasting color will be used for the toe, the heel, and the stripes on the cuff. So I'm going to choose black for my main color and the gray marl for my contrasting color. So what we're gonna do is, once you've made that decision, we're gonna start with the contrasting color and we're gonna set the main color aside. So I'll set it over there. The next thing to do is to decide how many stitches you want to cast on. So if you've knit socks before, you might have a good idea. So um, I'm knitting these socks for my husband and I usually cast on somewhere between 64 and 68 stitches for his socks. Now I've been knitting socks for, what, about two years now? So I've had lots of experience. I've knit many, many pairs of socks for myself and for my husband and for other people. Uh, so I have a good idea of what my gauge is. If you're a brand new sock knitter, um, you could try, you know, picking a number, casting it on, uh, seeing how it feels when you slip it over your foot. If you can't get a little tube of yarn around your heel, then you definitely need more stitches. And that's the main thing to worry about is getting the sock on over your foot, over your heel, and up your leg. So if you're a brand new knitter, it's gonna be trial and error. But the main color yarn that I'm using, this black yarn, I've knit socks out of this before with these same size needles. And my gauge is 15 and a half stitches for two inches. So since I already have that knowledge and I know what size sock I need, I know I'm gonna cast on 64 stitches. So hopefully that gives you a reference point to get started. Now, I love knitting socks cuff down because of the cast on that I use. So the cast on I'm going to use is a particular long tail cast on called the Twisted German Cast On. And that's where I'm going to start. So it's a long tail cast on, which means you need a long tail. And what I like to do is uh, to measure how long my tail is, I like to use one and a half of my arm lengths. <laughs> so I know not everyone has the same length arm as I have, but I will hold the end of the yarn in my hand, stretch my arm out, bring this to the center of my body, and then do another half of an arm. And I usually have a lot hanging on the front of the sock. You know, I find out I didn't need quite that much yarn, but I cast on a sock the other day and I didn't do the arm and a half. And I have a tail that's this long, which is going to be very difficult to weave in later. So something to consider. All right, I'm gonna measure out my tail. Okay, so I have the yarn on my needle, and all I did was lay the yarn over the needle. And then I put my index finger right on top of it to hold it down. So I'm holding my needle in my right hand, and I'm using the index finger only to hold it in place. So the way that I've laid the yarn over the needle is I have the working yarn in the front and the working yarn is still attached to the ball and I have the tail in the back and the tail is just the tail end of the yarn. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come in with my left hand and I'm going to grab both of those strands of yarn, the working and the tail, with my three fingers back here, leaving my thumb and my index finger free to use for this method. So what I'm going to do is grab both ends of the yarn with these three fingers. Then I'm going to place my index finger and thumb in between these two strands. So I'm not twisting it on there. It's still working yarn in the front, tail in the back. Okay, so I put these two fingers in that loop I've just created. 
And now I'm going to create these loops around my thumb and index finger. So I'm just bringing my needle, my yarn needle here, my right hand, in between those two fingers. Okay, like this. Everyone see that? Okay. <laughs> so, what I'm going to be doing is moving my needle, I'm still holding my yarn here, uh, around to catch these strands. Okay, so let's start over here so I can get a, a better... Okay, so I put my two fingers, my thumb and index, in between the strands. I'm holding them tight with my other three fingers. So I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to go under both strands that go around the thumb. I'm going to catch this inside one and bring it underneath that other strand. Then I'm going to go over to my index finger. I'm going to catch this strand right here on top. And I'm going to bring it through this small space right here. And I'm going to let go with my thumb and index finger. And I'm going to tighten up those strands. Not too tight because you don't want these stitches to be really tight on the needle. But not completely loose either. So now I have two stitches on my needle. The first one was just laying the yarn over and holding it. The second one we actually used the method for casting on. So I'm going to show you this again. And you can see the yarn that's wanting to come in the front and wanting to go towards the back. And those are still the working yarn and the tail. They're not twisted. So I put my thumb and index finger in between, grab the rest with my other three fingers down here, hold it tight, space it out, bring your needle forward and down towards the palm of your hand. So this should always be above those other strands. You're going to bring the needle down below underneath both strands that go around the thumb, catch this strand right here, and bring it underneath the other strand. Go over to the index finger, grab this strand right up here, pull it through the tiny space here in between. It's almost like a triangle shape in there. Tighten these up but not too tight. Make sure that with your right hand index finger you're tightly holding these stitches on the needle so they don't slip off the end. And then repeat. Under both strands, around the thumb, catch this inside one and bring it underneath. Go over to the index, catch this strand right here, bring it through that small space, that triangle right there. Tighten up the ends. And just keep going until you have all your stitches on the needle. Because I am casting on 64 stitches. And I'm using two needles then I am going to cast on 32 stitches onto one needle and 32 stitches onto the other. That way I have all 64 stitches. So I'm going to keep going casting on using this method. At some point I'm going to have to start counting these stitches. But notice how my right index finger keeps jumping over to grab the new stitch. That's really important because you don't want them to slide off the end. And once you get in a rhythm and you form that muscle memory, this cast on doesn't seem so difficult. Okay, so I have all 32 stitches on this needle. Now I need 32 on the second needle. So, those of you casting on using more than one needle, here's what I like to do. Place the new fresh needle on top of the old one. I'm going to hold the old needle between my index and middle finger. And I'm holding the new needle here with these fingers. My ring and pinky and the thumb. Okay, now I have my left hand to hold the yarn again. Thumb and index in between the two strands, tensioning with the other three fingers. Now I'm using this new needle, which has nothing on it yet. But I'm going to go under, catch this strand, go to the index, catch this strand, bring it through the space. 
and I am going to tighten this one up quite a bit more tightly than I've done for the others because it's I've got this extra space here between the needles so it'll loosen up a little bit later so for now I'm going to make that as tight as I possibly can and now I don't really have to hold this other needle I just continue holding the new needle put my finger on top of that stitch and keep going now this needle tip sometimes gets in the way so what I like to do is put on two or three stitches onto this new needle so here I've got three stitches because I've got this is not a DPN it's a circular with a cord I'm going to slide this so the stitches are on the cord it's more flexible and I don't have this needle tip getting in the way and then I'm going to keep going casting on the rest of these stitches again I need 32 on this second needle okay so I have all 64 stitches cast on 32 on one needle 32 on the other so now what we're going to do is actually join in the round and start knitting so I'm going to turn this so I've got the strands of yarn hanging on the right here and those strands are on the back needle and I need to straighten out my stitches I don't need them to be twisted I don't really want to knit a Mobius 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 Okay. So what I like to do is put that bottom ridge facing inward. So on the back needle it faces forward, on the front needle it faces backward. So here on this edge, right, it just that ridge is on the inside of this turn. And then that way I know my stitches aren't twisted at all. Okay. So this front needle, now I move that ridge down. This front needle is where I'm going to start working. So I'll slide these stitches up onto the needle. It's a little tight there. And I like to double check and make sure I didn't accidentally twist my stitches. Nope. Okay. And I like to knit continental. If you're working with two, two circular needles, right, you work on the same needle. If the stitches are on the front, this other side is from the front. The entire other circular needle is in the back. So we're going to work a 2x2 two two rib to start the sock. So I'm going to insert my needle knitwise into the first stitch. And I'm going to figure out which of these ends is my working yarn. There it is, it's attached to the ball. Okay, so this right here is my working yarn, and the other one is my tail. So I'm going to leave the tail hanging, okay? And this working yarn is attached on that bottom ridge. I'm going to bring it underneath this needle over here. And I like to knit continental style, so I hold my yarn in my left hand. It's a little awkward with the camera in the way. I've got my working yarn here. I'm going to hold it in my left hand. Scrunch up my stitches. There's that working yarn coming directly from that bottom ridge over here to where I'm going to be working. And I'm just going to knit. And because it's the first stitch, I like to pull it really tightly. That first join there is usually pretty loose so I like to pull really tightly knit knit purl purl and we're just going to knit two purl two all the way around this sock for the first row okay so doing two by two ribbing so knit two purl two knit two purl two Okay, so I have finished the first round of ribbing on the sock, 
and that's a knit two, purl two ribbing. So you knit two stitches, purl two stitches, and repeat that all the way around the sock. So right here, the first round is finished. So now all I have to do is four more rounds like that in this color. So you're going to have a total of five rounds in the knit two, purl two ribbing in your contrasting color, just five rounds. And then we're going to switch colors and add in the main color. So I'm going to go ahead and knit uh, four more rounds like this to have five total. So I have finished the five rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing in the contrasting color and now what I'm going to do is join in the main color and do another five rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing in this color. So uh, what I'm going to do is get this yarn ready. So I like to wrap it around my pinky over here. Like I said, I hold the yarn in my left hand, so I hold it in my, wrap it around my right hand pinky just to give me some tension. So I'm going to get my stitches ready. And the working yarn from your contrasting color, uh, not that it matters right here at the beginning, but you want to make sure that this is carried on the inside of the sock. <laughs> So I'm not actually going to cut this end. What I'm going to do is carry it up inside the sock so I don't have as many ends to weave in later. So I'm going to take my main color, my black yarn. Now I do want to do 2x2 two two ribbon, but on this first round of color change, I'm going to do a plain knit round. And that will keep my stripes really clean in this ribbing section. So what I'm going to do is join this main color. And I'm going to knit all of these stitches. So I'm not going to do any purling. It's all going to be knit. I'm trying to watch it th this through the camera, which isn't working too well. <laughs> so yes, I'm just going to knit this entire round. And what that's going to do is put all your purl bumps on the back side, so on the inside of the sock. So it's purling that creates um, messy lines in your stripes. So when you're knitting, you're moving this loop from the previous row, that stitch, onto the back side of your work. And when you purl, the loop is shown on the front. So what's happening is on the inside of the sock, you get all those purl bumps. So on the front side, 
the change in colors is very clean and it looks like a nice straight stripe. So again, I'm just going to finish knitting all the way around just on this one round, the very first round when you change colors. Okay, so I've knit all the way around for the first round of this color change. And as you can see, all those pearl bumps are on the inside of the sock, which is where we want them. So when you're going back around for round two, like I said, make sure that this working yarn from your contrasting color is held toward the inside of the sock. We want to carry that up with our work, but we want to carry it up on the inside of the sock, not the outside, because we don't want that to be seen. So whenever I come back around, I always make sure that the working yarn of my contrasting color or whatever color I'm not currently using, I want to make sure that that is carried towards the inside of the sock. And then also the end of your main color that we just joined, bring that in toward the inside of the sock. So I have that end hanging out here and it's going through the inside of the sock there. Now over here is my working yarn with my black. So I'm going to grab that. And now I'm going to do knit two, purl two. I'm going to do the rib now. And this first round is one of five. So I'm going to work four rounds of knit two, purl two in my main color. So knit two, purl two, Oh, it looks like I caught one strand there instead of the whole ply. Okay, so I knit two and now I'm going to purl two. Knit two, purl two, all the way around. So again, we want five rounds total in this color, and we've already completed one of those rounds. So I'm working on the second round right now. So we'll just keep going. Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And uh, I'll be back when I finish five total rounds in my main color. Okay. So I finished all five rounds in my main color, my black, and the first round was all knit stitches and the other four were in the Knit 2 Pearl 2 ribbing pattern. So you can see that the color change between these is very clean, that this line is very, very clean. So that first round of all knit stitches is what makes this transition in colors a nice clean line. So what I'm going to do is go back to the contrasting color and I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to do a full round of knit stitches, just knit stitches in the contrasting color, and then four rounds in the Knit 2 Pearl 2 rib. So I'm going to get another stripe here, five rounds uh, deep in the contrasting color. So when I'm starting this round, okay, we were carrying this yarn up on the inside of the sock. So that yarn is being carried up vertically in your sock. So when you're doing this first stitch here, you don't want to pull this too tightly because then it's going to pull on the stitches down here and that's going to scrunch up your sock over on this side. So you want to pull it somewhat taut, but definitely not tight. So I don't want a whole ton of slack, but I don't want it to be super tight on that needle. Uh, what you're going to do is when you come back around on this round, you can tighten it up that way. But you don't, like I said, you don't want it to be pulling from the stitches way down here. Because it's going to scrunch up the cuff of your sock and it's just going to look sloppy and possibly be uncomfortable. So like I said, I'm just going to knit this entire first round so that the color change on these stripes is very clean. And then I'll do four rounds in the Knit 2 Pearl 2 ribbing. 
and then I'll check back in with you. Okay, so I finished those last five rounds in the contrasting color. So again, the first round was all plain knit stitches to keep this line very clean. And then the other four were in the knit to purl to pattern. So let me just show you the inside of the sock so that you can see that when we put all those purl bumps on the inside of the sock, on that color change row, so all of that messiness <laughs> is on the inside of the sock instead of the outside. So again, this is what the inside of the sock looks like, and this is the outside, so it's very clean, very sharp looking stripes. So now I am choosing to only do these 15 rounds of ribbing. However, on that previous sock that I knit, I did uh, another five rounds in the main color and then another five in the contrasting to have a total of 25 rounds of ribbing. So if you're wanting to have a couple more stripes up on the top of the sock, go ahead and do, again, uh, five more rounds in the main color and then five more rounds in the contrasting. But the idea is that you want to start with the contrasting on your stripes and end with the contrasting. Because then from here, we're going to work in the main color for the leg of the sock. So you want to have the contrast between the end of your stripes, the end of your ribbing, and the start of the leg in the main color. You want that to be um, that last stripe there. So yeah, that's the cast on and the ribbing and the method I use for striping in ribbing.